Okay, we're live. That means that anybody who doesn't have Google or can't get Hangouts to work can actually go to the YouTube link that I posted on the group and watch it streaming live there. So if they go there, they can see this right now as it is. Of course, they can't talk and interact or be part you know, of this Hangout, but at least they can watch. And it'll all be recorded for later. So thank you, ladies, for coming. Everyone, that means that anybody who doesn't have Google or can't get Hangouts to work uh -oh. can actually go to the Okay, I had the YouTube page up and so I started playing. Anyway, um, <clears throat> all right, so welcome to the Google Hangout. Uh, really excited to be here. Every time we do this, we get better and better and better at it. We've got the link. Whenever we have it, there's a link that anybody can click on and join. Next week, I'm going to start to do Facebook events so that people can keep track better and you know remember and get reminders that it's tonight. Uh, and eventually, I'll send out an email blast to the team so that we can have even more people come and join us. Um, so things are looking good. Well, my name is Pascal Labrise, and I am a Cloud9 Parties Executive, Founding Consultant, and Advisory Board Member, and absolutely love this company, love this business. This is my 10th year, um, and I've been with Cloud9 since day one. Uh, of pre-launch. That was nine weeks before our official launch and I'm not going anywhere else. As a matter of fact, before Cloud9 started, I really thought that there was no other company out there. Um, so much that I started to uh, see how I could do it on my own and hey, maybe I could start my own company, but what a headache that was. <laughs> that lasted a good few months and um, <clears throat> a good few depressive nap naps and overeating and all sorts of stuff. Um, and then Cloud9 came and it's, it's a dream. Uh, with other companies, I would have to look at my downline report at the end of the month to make sure that the team's doing the numbers so I get paid at my level. I don't have those kinds of worries with Cloud9. So um, I live in New Jersey, right next to New York. I have two girls that are 9 and 10. Um, and this is all I do. Um, I've made it my full-time job when they're in school. I'm working from about 8.30 to 3.00. And then 3 to 9, I really try not to work. That's homework, dinner, house cleaning. And then after 9, I'm usually back at the computer working again. So, all right, so we're going to go in order here. Everybody just introduce yourself. Give, give a little information about you. Let's start in order on my screen here. I see Irene first. Hello, everyone. I'm Irene Rodriguez. And I've been with Cloud9 since January 15th. Uh, romance for five years. I'm a senior manager under Pascal, and um, I love what I do and uh, love it so much. I recruited one today. Got a new recruit today. All right. I got I got four more that say they're gonna buy their kit by Saturday. So we'll see. Um, I do work full time. I have a full time job, and I do this full time too. So if you can imagine between my full-time day job, my Cloud9 business, and my three kids. I have no idea if I'm coming or going on certain days. <laughs> but I love what I do. I love empowering women. I love uh, saving relationships one bedroom at a time. That's my mantra. And uh, that's it about me. Let's go to the next person. <laughs> Thank you, Irene. Like, now that's you. Hi, I'm Legna. I've been with Cloud9 a couple of months now, I think since the end of March. I live in New Jersey, and hopefully pretty soon the business will take off. Good. Slow but steady. Okay, so uh, I don't know. I see Maureen's in the Hangout, but I don't know if she has mic capability. I'm I'm here. It's just I have a ginormous zit, so we're using my profile pic. Okay. That's what's happening. Hi, Erin. It's um, nice to hear your voice. What? I'm fat. I'm vain, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> but um, more, uh, my name is Maureen Ricaldi. I've been with Cloud9 since February, and I'm Irene, who I adore. Hey, babe. Hey. And, 
and it's it's slow and st well not steady but it's slow for me but I love everything I do and I love learning a whole everything I've learned I've added so many um in the bag so to speak and I've been able to share it and that's why I love what I do and I totally work full time as well. Thanks, um, Maureen. Robin, you're next. Is Robin frozen or is she staring? <laughs> she looks All frozen. Right. We'll come back to Robin. Tanya, tell us about yourself. I'm Tanya. I'm here in sunny Florida. Um, I was with Cloud9 um, in October of last year and then I did have to resign for a short period of time and I just re-signed back up because it's a great company to be with as of yesterday. Um, my upline is Robin so hopefully I'll be able to see her here shortly because I'm really eager to meet her. Um, so I'm just um, eager to get started. I have a few parties already set up for June, and I'm looking to get my six parties for my Fast 45 and get the company back up. Great. Nice to meet you, Tanya. Nice to meet you guys. <laughs> Wendy, are you there? Yes, dear. Hey, Wendy. Can you hear me all right? Hello everybody, I am Wendy Richardson, I'm your Northern Oklahoma rep. I've been with Cloud9 since the very beginning. I started actually just right after launch, so it was perfect timing. If you need anything, I'm pretty close with Pascal and I've pretty much learned how to do things around here. See you guys. Thanks Wendy. Alright, so we are going to get started with the training portion of this hangout and that is on marketing so let me get my um, <clears throat> screen share set up alright can everybody see the marketing slide yes alright can you see the next yeah. one Yes. All right. The text isn't backwards or anything? No. Excellent. No. <laughs> All right. So, um, well, I guess it should be like a training call. If you have any background noise or, um, you know, if you have noise or anything like that, mic, static, anything like that, just you have the capability to mute yourself. So just go ahead and do that if you think that you're going to be having noise come into your mic. Um, while we do this marketing training. All right, so here we go. Uh, marketing, it, this is going to be a very broad training because marketing has so many different aspects to it. It is a huge subject. It's so huge that I had the thought today to break it up into kind of mini trainings um, after today. Maybe like a training every few days or once a week or something like that. Maybe I can make videos or something for each part of it. Um, <clears throat> so marketing is mandatory. I truly believe that. You know, any, somebody can open up a pizza shop somewhere and no one's going to know it's there unless they drive by and, you know, word of mouth can travel slowly, but they need to start listing themselves right away um, in, in business directories and Google and paper and flyers and that's what they do in order to get business and if they have the rights pizza. If they have good pizza, then the customers are going to keep coming back and they keep marketing. They get new customers and what do you know the next thing? They're opening up a second pizza shop in another town. And without marketing, a business cannot flourish and I believe that that's true for our business. Um, so, you know, you can have the perfect kit, the perfect presentation, the perfect outfit, but if you don't have parties, I mean, that is the blood life of this business so you need to market to get those things um, <clears throat> alright so we're going to talk about five types of marketing uh, word of mouth local promotions event and expos communications and internet marketing first is word of mouth kind of basic marketing um, 
I think the very first marketing that a brand new rep should do is her grand opening. You have a grand opening, celebration, celebrating your new business. And of course, you're going to tell your circle of friends, your family, people around you about your grand opening or lunch party. Right. So um, otherwise, you know, your friends and their friends and their friends, people, if you have a huge circle, great. Um, some people with really large circles can do pretty well right away. Other people with smaller circles have to work a little harder. Okay. Um, ask for referrals. If one of your friends or family members don't want to host a party, you always ask them if they know anybody who would. Just like you would at a party, when you ask in the ordering room if someone wants to book a party and they don't, you ask if they know someone who would. All right, parties should be memorable, of course. This is um, where people talk good about you. If you give a party, let's say bachelorette party, where the bride had an amazing time and walked away with like two, over $200 of free spending thanks to the Hostess Rewards Program and Bridal Bucks, then people are going to remember that bachelorette party and they're going to remember you there. And when another friend gets married, they're going to think of you as an idea. Okay, and then they're going to suggest it to whoever is, you know, planning the black trap party, and that is total word of mouth right there. So, um, you know, how fun your parties are and how memorable they are help with future word of mouth. A good customer hostess service habits. Um, I I love getting compliments on like customer care. If you know someone's not happy, I can do what I can to please them and I get compliments on it and it helps them feel comfortable enough to refer me to their friends for their romance needs. Okay. Um, all right, and strengthen your strength. What is your niche? This is an interesting point. I believe that everybody does have a kind of strength. Um, some specialize in sex ed. There are some reps who sign up and they're all about educating women and, and learning as much sex ed as they can. You know, Other reps, I know another rep who specializes in events and expos. I mean, she that's like the only marketing that she does and that's the only place where she gets her bookings. Um, she loves having a table and sitting there all day and <laughs> that's nothing I could really, that's not my string. Um, but she loves it and meeting people and networking and then walking home with a good amount of booked parties and a whole bunch of contacts to follow up on. So you won't recognize your niche right away. It comes with time. Whatever you find yourself good at, whether it's comedy or you know, maybe you're good at organization and following up with people, then build on that and keep strengthening your strength and you'll become, you know, one of the best at that particular part of this business. All right, next slide is the local promotions. This is the next form of marketing that you Business cards always make it a habit. I know that's last on the list here, but give them to people. When you are grocery shopping, you have the opportunity to give your business card to 10 plus women who have friends who they would invite over to host a party with you. You just never know. Um, speaking of no, <laughs> a lot of them won't be interested naturally. So the more you give them out, you're going to get that percentage become a bigger number of people who come back to you for parties. Okay. Um, bulletin, bar bulletin boards, uh, you can just tack your business card up there. On the right, I have a picture of the back of my business card. It says host a party. It has my number and it has a little tidbit about hosting the party. All right, this is the back of my business card and if you look at it, it's really just like a small flyer. The front has my name, my title, my website address and all, you know, the little details. But the back is like a little flyer and it looks great when I take three, four, or five and tack them on to bulletin boards wherever I find them. If you're in New Jersey, you know Quick Check. I, we live near Quick Check and I'm always putting my business cards there. And every time I go to Quick Check, they're gone. So I guess people are taking them. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, make it a habit, leave anywhere. There's some very interesting out of the box ideas for business cards, like just dropping them on the floor, which is kind of littering. <laughs> but if you're in a grocery store, or, you know, if you're in a drugstore, how about putting your business card on a shelf by the makeup section or um, 
you know, maybe uh, by where they sell the lubes in CVS. Uh, you can just slip it in a Cosmo magazine. If someone buys that Cosmo magazine, they're going to open it up later on and find your business card in there. Okay. Uh, flyers is a little would be a little more um, would be larger and more detailed than a business card. The good the there's some great care tab flyers uh, documents in the drop box. It's, it's a flyer promoting hosting a party, but with the tab. Pascal, we can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. All right. Yes. I don't know what happened to my mic. I didn't touch anything. Um, where did I leave off? Flyers. Oh, good. Okay, that was no longer. Thank you for letting me know. Um, <clears throat> All right, so flyers, you have a tear tab flyers where they can just take a tab on the bottom of the paper with your information on it is very effective. Goldfish bowl raffles are sort of like what you see on the right of the slide here. You can get them custom made. They're not that expensive. They're just simply cardboard, printed cardboard, folded in a way. Um, I mean, you would have to, I suppose that creating the graphics would be the most intricate part of creating something like one of these lead boxes. That's what they're called, they're lead boxes, where someone can win something. Um, so yeah, those lead boxes are really nice. But you got to design them and you have to buy them. I have here on the slide, it says goldfish bowl raffles. Uh, this can be as simple as a plastic goldfish bowl with a sign on it that says something about win, win a free romance party. <laughs> How about that? You can hook up with a salon, and um, it's nice if you know someone who owns a salon. Otherwise, you're just going to have to make your way in and network with them somehow. Like, for example, they can win, uh, their clientele can win a free romance party, $25 worth of romance products, and a free um, manicure, you know, something like that. In return, first of all, you're buying that manicure that one person's going to win. Um, but you can also maybe take some of their flyers or brochures and have them at your parties, like in the ordering room or something. You're trading promotions like that. But what's really golden about the goldfish bull raffles is all that contact information that you're going to be collecting once you complete the raffle. You would leave it out for like two, we two weeks. And you can have 50, 100, 150, two, who knows? However much traffic that place of business gets, you're going to have all those names, numbers, addresses, emails to contact local to book a party or just, you know, to share the business opportunity with. So that's a pretty um, valuable part of local promotions, I think. Lastly is networking with other businesses. This is connecting with wedding planners, erotic bakers, a salon owners, you know, maybe a salon would hold an after hours ladies night party every third Thursday of the month. Something like that is cool because what if you can get a few businesses to do that? You get a bar to do a ladies night every second Thursday of the month. You get a salon to do it every third Thursday of the month. Um, maybe some sort of bingo brunch every first Sunday of the month. And imagine if you have stuff like that going all the time, that's almost like you already have parties, guaranteed parties on your calendar every month. All right, next slide is our events and expos. This is a picture of an expo ta table by one of our team members, Kimmy Spencer. It's really nice how she has all the, um, the banners and the shelves. And I believe that that's some sort of a screen it looks like an iPad or something that's sticking up on that wall. But um, anyway, like I said before, events and expos is not my niche at all. It's actually one of my weaknesses. Um, past experiences I've had just haven't been very good, so I never really got into them. I just did stuck with what I was good at. But I know a lot of people who have great, great, great success with events and expos. Um, Bridal expos, women's expos, there are holiday fairs, um, fundraisers, 
um, I've seen a competitor's table at a state fair before. It was like an indoor section of a state fair um, where there was just so much traffic going through. You know, I have to wonder how, how she did there. Um, but what's awesome about events and expos is all that contact collecting. I know there are a lot of bridal shows out there that when you buy a table, you get all this stuff with it. Um, you get including all the bride's information. So you have her name, her number, her email, her phone number, and all that so you can follow up with her after the Vital Expo, right? Plus, if you do a raffle or something, you also have all the other women attendees who were there, um, their contact information, too. Uh, other events would be like an open house. You know, you can hold an open house quarterly. Uh, catalog launch. You know, every July, our catalog comes out. Um, you could do a catalog launch every August. But we also have our supplements that come out, holiday supplements. Um, Valentine supplement, spring summer supplement. Those are those are good reasons to have catalog launches too. I mean, I know it's just a supplement, but you can get a few of the new items and showcase them at your catalog launch. Now, people aren't just coming to your launch just for the products; they're coming to also have fun and socialize and maybe win things too. So <clears throat> when you do a catalog launch and you keep it regular, people like to come back and see what's new and just to see you and to have fun and win some stuff. Uh, hostess appreciation events after a while when you've gathered parties over the years and hostesses you can hold maybe a yearly hostess appreciation event that's very nice banks do that with their customers as they should customer appreciation events uh, naughty bingo or bunko um, those look like a lot of fun especially naughty bingo or, or dirty bingo I've been thinking a lot about starting one of those in the New York area, but not being a huge event person, you're kind of procrastinating on it a little bit. But um, Barb Asbrand is a uh, one of the managers with Cloud9, and she specializes in those. She has really successful ones all the time, and at a leadership retreat in February, we played it, and it was so much fun. It was the first thing we did on the second day of training early in the morning. We played Dirty Bingo. It was great. All right, next slide. Communications. All right, communications as, as marketing are things like mailing lists. Start your mailing list right away. When one person buys your when you get your very first order, you know, that person can be added to your mailing list. And after time, when you do parties and more and more parties, you can build your mailing list to thousands of women. <clears throat> yes, you can. Um, you can start off your mailing list by just using your regular email. You would want to put all the emails of everybody in your mailing list in the BCC section. Um, you know, put yourself in the to section. And don't put anybody in the CC, but put everyone's email with a comma after it in the BCC. That way nobody sees who else the email is sent to. Their emails are private. All right? And, of course, it's free. Once you get to, like, 20, 30, 40, once you get to, like, 40 or 50 email collections, then you, want, you might want to start going with a uh, service. And MailChimp is one of my favorites because it's free for up to 2,000 consultants. So you can actually just go ahead and start MailChimp right away if you want to. It's MailChimp.com and you can go and open a free account and start looking at their templates and seeing you know, how to design a newsletter and I tend to keep mine very simple, you know, like a header and just kind of to the point. Others make theirs really nice with articles, uh, drink recipes, product spotlights, um, <clears throat> Okay, so other a, lo a lot of other reps also like mynewsletterbuilder.com, which um, has some really, really nice templates that are fit Cloud9 parties, and they also provide content for romance reps too, um, sex tips, articles, stuff like that, and that does have a monthly fee. So that was mynewsletterbuilder.com. All right, social media, of course, that's like a huge communications tool for marketing. Um, when you, I have a customer slip at my parties that people fill out, and one of the questions 
is, can I add you to Facebook? And there's a little checkbox and it says yes to it. So if they check that, I know that I could look up their name, their email, or their phone number in Facebook, find them, and then add them. And now just adding them and never talking to them is almost like inviting someone to your party or maybe even inviting someone over and not speaking to them. <laughs> which is not very nice. Um, so be sure to like a lot of stuff, comment. People love compliments. If somebody is posting a new hairstyle, by all means, tell them it looks great, and they'll remember you more for it, believe me. Um, all right, so following people. Uh, also messaging. Um, someone posted they graduated from college, something or other. You can post comments saying congratulations and just that or you can send them a message and actually personally com congratulate them by a message saying you know your inspirational congratulations on your on your graduation on your graduation I miss I wish you much luck you know, something like that again more meaningful <clears throat> all right follow-up calls and customer care kind of the same thing um, somebody um, you know spent a lot of time with you in the ordering room, had lots of questions, and you really helped them through their order, how nice it is for you to call them when they receive their order and make sure that they're happy. Um, you can even, not right away after they get their order, that's like one follow-up situation. You know, did you get everything? <laughs> um, but to give it a few weeks after that to actually say how they like it, and it shows that you care. Um, Follow-up calls would also be with leads that never worked out. People said that they would book a party but didn't. People said they would join the team but haven't. You following up with those people and picking up the phone and calling them is part of definitely part of marketing, of course. <clears throat> All right, get organized. Communications is best when scheduled, um, especially if your mailing list. You know, you're going to do it monthly. Okay, put it on your calendar and do it. Um, if you're going to run a fan page on Facebook or a business page where you're communicating with your quote fans um, schedule it you know make sure you put something out there every day um, and what's great about the Facebook business page pages are that you can schedule your posts so if you really want to save time take a good chunk of time and schedule all your posts for the whole week right um, the Facebook business pages by the way has have a page manager app for um, for smartphones, which is great because you can get notifications if you get any messages or anything to your business page from your phone. Um, all right, content. It's nice to have content handy. Let me get to my notes here. Um, for example, uh, Google. You can find some great articles in the Dropbox. Great ideas. Um, Cloud Nine. You know they're always just throwing out these specials here and there like the May Locket or something like that so that's a great place to find things to communicate um, you know things to send out to your mailing list or to call someone about or to post to your business page about um, also other reps look at see look at how other reps are communicating it's all out there for you to look at it's public so see what they're doing. How? What are they posting to their business pages? Subscribe to their mailing lists. Why not? See what kind of newsletters they're sending out. What kind of posts they're putting on their business page. <clears throat> All right. Internet marketing. Ooh. Big, big topic. <laughs> One of my favorites, too. Um, internet marketing is amazing. It's limitless. It's global. It's free or low cost. Uh, it's from home or from your phone, from wherever you are. It's increasingly more effective, um, more and more every year. Uh, there are also a ton of options of how you can market online, which might be a catch-22 because, yeah, there are a ton of options, but, uh-oh, I'm confused and overwhelmed. Where do I start? So we're going to cover some categories, and they are directories and listings, classifieds and groups, social media, and blogging and search engine marketing. <clears throat> All right, so, you know, everything I'm sharing tonight, don't think you have to do it all. You certainly don't. 
my advice is just to pick a few things here and there um, and stick with those and do them consistently and see how they work. If you find that they're not working after time, tweak it up a bit. Change something, uh, you know, if you're traveling to market and it's not working, stop traveling. Get into internet marketing so you can stay home, spend more time and less money with that. Um, but I'm going to get into that more later, especially when we get into social media, because we know how time-consuming that could be. But we're going to start with um, <clears throat> directories and business listings. So Yelp, YP.com, which is actually Yellow Pages, MerchantCircle.com, Google Places, LinkedIn, Local.com. These are all directories where anyone can find something they're looking for locally. Uh, somebody can go to Yelp. And search in and search Middle Eastern restaurant Newark, New Jersey, uh, or uh, pet sitter San Francisco, California. You know they always put what they're looking for in the area, and then up comes all these listings, usually with um, links to websites, phone numbers, uh, reviews too, stuff like that. Um, you're going to write a description. So you can fill out as many directories and business lists and business listings as you want or as you can. What's great about them is that they don't go away quickly. They don't expire. They just stay up. And you never know when one of your business listings is going to appear in the search engines when someone goes to Google and wants to look for a sex toy party in Houston, Texas. You never know if that rep from Houston, Texas who posted in local.com's ad or her listing is going to come up right there on the first page for that person looking for a party. So that's what's valuable about those. <clears throat> Yext.com is a website where you can go and put in your business name or put in your number, put in your phone number that you use for your business and check for missing listings. If you have already posted on Yelp and Yellow Merchant Circle and Google Places, if you've already done a lot of that already, go there, type in your phone number and your business name, either or, and click search and it'll bring up all these different sites and tell you if you're there or not, which is really cool. Um, all right, clickable links and lots of keywords. To increase your chances of the directory showing up in search engines when people search for like pleasure parties in your town, you want to make sure you put the word pleasure parties in your description, in your listing. Um, I know Merchant Circle is one directory or business listing where, I mean, you can have a blog in that listing. You can upload an unlimited amount of pictures. You can make your description five pages long. <laughs> so don't forget to put lots of keywords that have to do with this business. Um, think about what someone would go to Google and search for if they were looking to host a party. They would search for romance parties, pleasure parties, sex toy parties, adult toy parties, hey, bachelorette parties, okay, and then of course your area too. Um, but usually these directories already have your area, like you're already showing up in your area in Merchant Circle, so your area is kind of in there already. Um, all right, the categories are usually like event services, entertainers, health and beauty, <clears throat> All right, that's not really that important unless you're totally like off off base. <laughs> but health and beauty, entertainers, um, event services. I like event services. All right, so something you can do later on is go to Google and type a keyword for our parties in your area. Um, so if you are in <clears throat> Denver, Colorado, Type in Sex Toy Parties Denver, Colorado, and search Google and see what comes up on the first page. You're going to see a lot of different directories come up. I'm pretty sure of it. And if you are in Denver, then you better go to those directories and put your listings there so that when people click on it, you'll be there too. And play around. Put Romance Parties um, Colorado, okay? And then you'll see what listings, what results come up for that, you're going to find different results, go ahead and list yourself in those directories too. Okay. <clears throat> Lastly is work at home mom and direct sales websites. Um, you're not going to find that many free listings at these sites, but if you're looking to recruit, these are awesome. 
when I first started Cloud9, I got a listing as a ground floor opportunity at, you know, it's great. I can't even remember the website right now. Partyplancompanies.com. Uh, I think that was it. Partyplancompanies.com. It's very girly, very, you know, mommy work at homes ish. And, um, <clears throat> And it was uh, $20, and it was 18 months long. And I got so many leads. They send the leads directly to you. Like in your email, you get all the information because there's a form on your um, on your ad there. Pay $20 for this ground floor opportunity ad. And I held on to that Cloud9 Party spot, uh, exclusive spot for 18 months, and that brought me a lot of rep leads and a lot of uh, team members too. Can you repeat what uh, website that was again? I think, I don't remember exactly, I think it's partyplancompanies.com. Thank you. Okay. There's also directsellingopportunities.com. Um, you know what? I'm going to write myself a note here to um, post the list of these websites that are great for uh getting ads for recruiting. They're generally, uh, you can spend anywhere from like $5 to list an ad in your state for a year up to like a few hundred dollars to be seen right smack in the middle of their home page. They have all sorts of different advertising opportunities. All right? But if you can get an exclusive um, that's not taken, if you can get like an exclusive listing where they, where there's a form on your ad, and then they'll send you um, leads. If you don't get anything in the first two months, then then um, just cancel your your. It's usually monthly that you pay. Then cancel it. All right. <clears throat> um, something I used to do in the past. I wrote this down here in my notes, but it's a way of thinking outside of the box when it comes to internet marketing. Um, I used to do a lot of eBaying. I used to buy a lot of stuff on eBay, sell a lot of stuff on eBay. I mean, not really our products, but um, yeah, I mean, I used to do some things that were like discontinued or just overstocked that I had that the company didn't curry, currently carry because that would be uh, against the rules. Um, books, jewelry, clothes, and every listing, every eBay listing that I did, I put a little thing about my business in the description. <laughs> and I was able to even put a link there. I don't know how the rules have changed. This was like six years ago. But um, at the bottom I would put like, you know, by the way, if you're interested in hosting a romance party or becoming a romance consultant, be sure to visit my website here. And it was just like a paragraph, you know. And I remember getting some hits from my eBay listings there. Okay. All right, next topic, classifieds and groups. This isn't a very strong um, form of internet marketing anymore. It used to be. When I first started Craigslist, that's really, really what did it for me. I used to get multiple leads daily from Craigslist. That was in 2004. Now I've noticed that Craigslist isn't even showing up in search engine results for people anymore. Used to be able to search Cloud9 parties, um, and your area, and there'd be a few Craigslist ads on the results that you can click on. A lot of times you would click on the ad, and then it would say this posting has expired, which was pretty annoying, but <clears throat> maybe that's why you just don't see it on, on Google anymore. So I'm really not that sure about Craigslist. I think that's something that needs to be tried and uh, experimented with now. Um, you know, I don't know if I can really comment on this anymore. I really got to try it. <laughs> but the local classifieds uh, is when you Google search classifieds in your area. You're going to find some radio stations, newspapers, stuff like that have class free classifieds, free online classifieds. It probably costs money to advertise a classified in their paper, the one that actually is printed and delivered or spread around town. But a lot of times they also have free online listings, and that's great for marketing, um, especially if you can have a clickable link there and then the and the keywords. That's helpful for, for your website. 
<clears throat> All right, social media groups, those would be things like where you can advertise. There are a lot of groups on Facebook, uh, direct sales advertising, where people just post ads all day long, and there are thousands, tens of thousands of people in these groups. So you never know who's going to see one of your ads. Before I talked about being organized, you know, with your marketing, and one way to be organized is to have some written ads somewhere um, that you could just open up a file and copy and paste. You know, a written ad about a bachelor party, a few written ads about hosting a party. Um, you know, not too long, three paragraphs, but not long paragraphs. <laughs> um, so, social media groups would also be something like yard sales uh, or buy sell trade groups where you can uh, put some overstock that you have on for sale. Um, Put, put a picture of a pair of shoes that you have that that you know that you're not going to sell or that you are willing to part with. No, actually, you don't have to part with them. Post a picture of your shoes and say, you know, who wants these for free? Message me. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you're going to get a lot of messages, probably. And then, yes, they can get those shoes for free if they host a party and the sales are $500 pretty much. Okay? So that's, a little, that's like one thing that you can, one of many, many things you can do. Um, lastly, on classifies and groups is the local meetup and networking groups. Um, this would be like meetup.com. You can find groups on meetup.com that you can meet with regularly. They may have weekly meetups. They may have monthly meetups. A lot of times if you're a mom, if you have children and you do this business, there are a lot of uh, work-at-home mom meetup groups where you network with each other and you help each other and you have that, that mom thing in common but also that direct sales and party plan thing in common. So those are great people to network with. Some activities that they do are um, <clears throat> like little parties. Um, how do I put this? It's like... There's a meetup scheduled, and ev and everybody does like a 10-minute presentation on their business or something like that, which is great practice for speaking, but also getting yourself out there. Swap parties, um, swap promotions. Hey, I'll put a little tidbit about you on my Facebook page. If you put a little tidbit about me on your Facebook page, just stuff like that. <clears throat> um, I have something here in my notes, it's not on the slide, but it's regarding message boards and forums, uh, which I think might slowly becoming extinct. Um, instead, you have communities on websites, um, like babycenter.com is a website that I started to go on when I was pregnant with my first child, met so many women, there's so many different groups within that community, and it's almost like a massive message board with all these different rooms. Well, you can make a profile. You can go visit the relationships board, and you can chime in, and you can give people advice, and then you can add friends, and you can become a part of that community, and people will know what you do, and they'll think about you when it comes to our products when it comes to bachelor parties, when it comes to wanting to make extra money, you know. So <clears throat> that's something about these communities or message boards is joining them and actually becoming active and becoming a member of them. So it's like forming a new circle. So by becoming active, it's basically just checking and posting every day. You don't have to spend hours. Just check, post, respond, help people. Um, people ask questions, give them advice. Uh, there are communities and message boards out there for weddings, for party planning, for romance, for relationships, for business, you know, work at home, message boards, stuff like that. A great one is WAHM.com. That's where I met Christy. <laughs> WAHM.com. That stands for work at home mom.com. There's a forum there. Um, pretty active. There's a party plan forum there. There's a romance companies forum there. I met Christy there in like 2006. Um, <clears throat> so. Next slide is social media. Uh, Facebook, 
Twitter, Google+, LinkedIn, YouTube, Pinterest, Instagram. Those are the biggest ones. We also got Tumblr, maybe, in there, too. Um, you're not going to join them all and be good at them all and spend hours on them all every day. That is impossible. Instead, you're going to have profiles and accounts for all of them, but use only two, maximum three, regularly and use them well. Right? Be mindful of your friends and the flow that you have going on them. Okay. Facebook, we're all already there. Okay, we're all already on Facebook. So become better at Facebook. Join some of these groups. Um, if you're using a personal profile that you don't want to blast the business out to because you have family, like young family members or something, then learn to use lists and put all the people you wouldn't see on your who you wouldn't want to see in your business on a list that when you create a post, you can exclude them from seeing it. All right. So there's so much to learn. That's why we're just Facebook alone. That's why it would be impossible to run all the all of these. Um, Twitter. Some people do really really well with Twitter and not with Facebook. Uh, Google Plus is pretty cool. It is really a whole nother world to learn though. Um, <clears throat> but it's very cool. <laughs> uh, LinkedIn and YouTube. Uh, I would say that my main focuses are Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube. I should be on LinkedIn a lot more because that is an awesome place to find recruits. It's a social networking site for business, for business networking. So whoever has a profile there is pretty professional. Uh, it's pretty business minded. That's where you're going to find some of your best recruits. All right, YouTube. Um, my my biggest my my video of the tushy teaser has somewhere between thirty and forty thousand views. I think that that's pretty cool. Now that's in like a year and a half time. Uh, I have gotten quite a few online orders from people across the country ordering nothing but the tushy teaser. Is it a coincidence <laughs> that that's my most viewed video on YouTube? I don't know. Um, also, the silver bullet. Um, I get a lot of like single orders for that. And uh, <clears throat> YouTube is there's a lot in there that people don't know. You can message people. You can friend people. You've got the comment thing, commenting thing going on. Um, but yeah, YouTube, YouTube's pretty powerful um, and easy to get into once you get the groove. You know, I started with a really rinky-dink camera on a laptop that I ended up hating, and um, now I have a much nicer camera. And you don't, it's not like you're posting, it's not like you're recording yourself and it's being seen right away. You can try again and try again, and then eventually you become better at it. But YouTube's pretty cool. Uh, Pinterest, Instagram, blah, blah, blah. blah. Uh, you can find out about those later, but <clears throat> all right, yeah, again, don't just post, interact, compliment, share. We talked about that earlier. Follow rules to avoid loss, uh, especially with Facebook. You don't want to go and friend every single person in that direct sales group that you just joined. Uh, what's going to happen is they're going to... Uh, click that they don't know you and Facebook can punish you by taking away your rights to add friends for a while or they can completely disable your profile and that's no fun because if you try to contact them to get your your profile back don't think you're getting any kind of response whatsoever um, you just gotta wait or open up a new page and that's pretty devastating <clears throat> All right, so you know, try to follow rules. If you want to add friends from, uh, you know, friends that you might think might be great business partners, and they look open to accepting you, they have lots of friends already. I wouldn't do more than any more than adding three friends a day, really. Okay, because according to Facebook, you shouldn't be adding anyone you don't know. So you do have to be really careful. Something like Twitter or Google Plus, you can go and add all day. Doesn't matter. Um, Facebook is different, though. <clears throat> um, next slide.
blogging and search engine marketing. Um, this is a very long-term results type of internet marketing. Um, basic blogging would be starting a blog on WordPress.com or Blogger.com. It's completely free. It's hosted at, at WordPress or at Blogger. Um, some people, a lot of people find Blogger much easier than World, WordPress. So if you're not super tech savvy or you're not intermediate, if you're more in the beginner stage, beginner type of internet user, then go to blogger.com. Uh, the picture on this slide is a blog, is a blogger, or a blog, is a blogger blog <laughs> that I created for the sole purposes of training. And you'll see the link there. It's cloud9bypassgal.blogspot.com. And that is a blogger blog. Uh, and if you go there, you'll see that it's got a lot of keywords. Um, I only have a few posts from when I first created it from training purposes. But really, posting, posting every day. Um, the next section is content over design. You know, Google doesn't care if it's pink and stars and pretty. They care what the text says and how often the text is changing. Uh, Google likes regular updates. So when you're adding a post a day or you know, consistently, um, if you're advertising your blog, if you're posting links to your blog on your directory listings or in social media, Google sees that too and they think that your blog is, more, is, is important. So it brings up your chances of showing up on first pages of search results. All right, so just remember to use those keywords. Always use, you know, always use like, um, you know, not don't just say host a party. Say host a sex toy party or host a romance party. Host an adult toy party. Change it up. And if you look at this blog that I created, you'll see the keywords are bolded in that first um, blog post, and you'll see how everything's different. I'll use New Jersey in one place, New York in, in another place, because I do parties in both. I'll use pleasure parties here, sex toy parties there, um, and mention a little thing about bachelor party that's very keyword rich, and that helps for, um, for search engine marketing. Uh, contact me should be easy. People like to see where to contact you quickly. Uh, if you have your phone number on your blog somewhere on the front page, uh, I have this on my personal website. Then anybody who's looking at it on a mobile phone can just click that number and then it'll call you right away. That's very quick and easy. Contact me. Um, or also a form. On this example blog here, uh, you'll see there's a contact button and there's a form there. I find that people like to fill out forms. Their name, um, their phone number, their email, comments. Are they interested in hosting a party, joining the team? Uh, purchasing products or other, you know. So forms are great because when your blog becomes popular, then you get these contact requests in your email, and it's really exciting. They are leads. <clears throat> All right, and this can definitely be a whole nother training call. So let's move on to our last slide, second to last slide, which is points to remember. Remember that marketing is an instant. Um, what you do now affects you much later. You know, starting a blog and posting every day. Uh, it might not be a few months till you start to get leads rolling in regularly. Maybe after six weeks, eight weeks, you might get a lead or two. But keep at it, and next thing you know, your blog and learn, learn and look things up. Next thing you know, your blog is showing up on the first page of Google, and you're getting lots of leads. <clears throat> Uh, consistency, what you put in, you get back. Um, scheduling helps. Uh, you can get a market, you can, like a marketing schedule. On Tuesday, do directory listings. On uh, on Thursday, do uh, do blog blogging. I mean, you want to post a blog post every day, but you know, every Thursday maybe you will uh, enhance it. You'll add extra features, or you'll market it, or something like that. <clears throat> Uh, write your own ads. Uh, it's very easy to copy someone else's ads or 
ask your upline if they have sample ads for Craigslist. A lot of people do that. I'll give an example ad or anything. Okay, you know, give them an example ad to start. But writing your own ads really builds creativity. Um, you want to write like you're speaking. If someone else, if someone asks you, um, can you tell me about hosting a party or what do I get for hosting a party? You know, how would you answer? And just how would you answer naturally? And you're you're by yourself. Take open a word document and start typing like you were talking. You know, I use O M G in my ads. You know, because I say oh my god a lot. <laughs> so I'll use O M G or you know, just say I'll say yeah. It's 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 a single sentence and it's just yeah period. <laughs> Things like that. Just like just like you talk and I think people are more open to that rather than a formal to the point you know, <clears throat> wording. Uh, paid advertising, if you're going to spend money on advertising online, um, definitely go with AdWords and uh, which is Google advertising. When someone goes to the search engines and they type something in to host a party or become a rep, that means that your your website would be at the top or in the side. Those are sponsored listings, then you can pay for your website to be there. It doesn't have to be very expensive either. As Google AdWords, um, and also the business sites, like I mentioned before, party plan companies, direct selling opportunities, dot com. Work at home mom business sites that sell advertising. Those are really, really great for recruiting. Um, if you're going to get paid advertising locally, try doing some events. See if it's for you. Um, then some great, great success stories when it comes to having vendor tables. Okay. All right. So thank you for coming. Now I'm going to get off screen share. Oh, okay, so so what did you all think? Did you learn a lot of marketing stuff? I did, and I appreciate you bringing this and putting the presentation together. Good. Thank Yay. You. Thank you. Um, I'll have well, I have yes. the video, but I'll also have the the PowerPoint file for you. I have some notes here to post these direct sales and party plan websites. So does anybody know what they're going to, um, like any ideas that I talked about tonight that you want to get started on or that you're going to do? I'm actually going to be starting on um, doing the Google search, like you said, to see exactly where everybody else is popping up so I can start doing my listings. Mm -hmm. And because I know that there's a couple other companies out, but they are very, um, I guess you want to say tame compared to um, a lot of stuff. And a lot of people are just not looking for tame. They're looking for a little more variety. Mm -hmm. And Cloud9 is there to give it to them. So... Um, I'm also going to start looking into the AdWord, and I already do the um, social media. I have about Facebook that I post into. Um, wow. Yeah, so I'm really, really big have on you, the Facebook. Have you heard of Google AdWords before? I have when I was with the previous company before coming to Cloud9. Um, I was going to do the, the AdWords, but I don't under, I don't really remember why I did it. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to look into it, but I'm also going to make sure that my information that I have on Yelp and mm -hmm. some other sites are updated with Cloud9 compared to the other company because even prior to being with, during my period of time where I left Cloud9 and just came back, I had a probably six or seven phone calls just from those ads, but I wasn't doing the parties anymore at that time. Mm -hmm. So it does work. You just have to be patient, and so I just want to make sure all that information is updated. Yeah, Google, um, I, um, a lot of times I get credits for Google AdWords. So I, 
ask me, I'm writing this down too, AdWords credit. Like um, like a $50 credit when you opened a new Google AdWords account. Okay. Also, Google is, um, you can totally call them and somebody will build the campaign with you on the phone. And it's totally cool that it's romance. <laughs> I love That's Google. awesome. Yeah. That's really great. Thank you for reminding me. I do remember that they had that credit. Mm -hmm. I completely forgot about that. I, I've, I've used it so many times, I don't have any more Google accounts to open up a new account, a new AdWord <laughs> account with. <laughs> um, all right, does anyone have any questions or anything to share? No. All right, great. This is like exactly an hour. Thank you, everybody, for coming. I'm excited to see you. Um, thank you for those of you who are watching the recording um, or maybe even watching live right now on the YouTube channel. Um, so our next training, our next hangout will be Today is the 28th. If the corporate call, the corporate celebration call is on June 4th, then our next hangout will be the 11th. We always do it like we, we do a hangout call the week after the corporate celebration call. But I'm going to post to the group and create an event for it. Too. All right, all, you have a great night. Bye. See you later. <laughs> Bye. Bye.